Okay, wo muss ich hin? Hi, hi. I haven't done any of those in a long, long while and I thought it might be time because I made myself some new stuff that I haven't shown you yet at all because I didn't do any so long video projects. So I'm going to do a dressing up in my new outfit. First thing is the one I finished last. I made myself a new chemise, finally. I'm not quite happy with the drawstring here, but um, I'm going to see how it works out. And if the shops ever open again, I might just use a different kind of tape because this is a little too stiff, but for today it'll do. Then what I'm especially proud of this is just for comparison. This is my old pair of short stairs. Stays? Short stairs, yeah, right. Um, these that I made completely by hand. I started last year in March when everybody had to do home office. And I finished them only last month. And those are based on two different pairs of sta stays. I keep saying stairs, oh my god. <laughs> I really am out of practice and I'm going to um, I'm going to link the stays I based these on in the description box and um, I'm almost happy with them they turned out quite nice and also I think it was Enchanted Rose costume she completely beat me to the punch because she made similar stays based on the same stays that I based these on but by machine, so she started way later and she finished way ahead of me and I didn't even know this was a race, apparently it was. Or maybe just these trends come and go and everybody has the same ideas at the same time, that's probably more like it. So, you're going to see how these look. And then a few other things I did are a little chemisette. I might put that on for a second and a tiny little fichu that looks very similar to the one that um, Eleanor Dashwood is wearing in Sense and Sensibility from 95. And this is the dress because I can't quite get rid of my cosplay roots I guess. <laughs> This is based on the 1995 Eleanor Dashwood dress, which is my absolute favorite. It's very dark um, blue in the original, and I found very similar fabric on sale by Colossal Coincidence. So I thought, wow, this would be perfect. And um, I had some difficulty with this dress, but I'm going to explain it when I put it on. All right, let's get started. Okay, socks are on. Oh, they aren't sitting quite right. Well, it's only for inside. So I was wearing kind of fake Regency boots that are actually just normal boots. The last time I was out because my dashwood shoes don't really work for the outside too well. Also, am I the only one who has some trouble with these? Because in the beginning I thought they were fitting really nicely. But then it turned out they weren't. I usually have to go over here twice with the little ties because they are really, really long. But also very wide in the back here and they just slip off. You can see I'm slipping out here so maybe my heels are too slim and the front is too big, I don't know. This is really, they are really difficult to wear. Let's be real. Very pretty but not all that practical after wearing them for quite some time now. I slipped out many times and that is very unfortunate when you're trying to climb stairs in a costume with a long skirt with all the layers that you need and then your shoe starts slipping on the stairs. 
that's not ideal. But yeah, for the inside, they totally work. Okay, now we're shooed. Let's get on with it. So this is uh, the neckline of the chemise with the proper gusset underneath. And this time I didn't make the same mistake. I made the neckline very, very low. I know sometimes um, when you make these, you get kind of scared that it might be too revealing, but this is underwear. And when you make a drawstring here, you can perfectly adjust it. And it's actually better if the fabric is pulled in a little around your bust. Also, you have the freedom to do this. So in case I want to wear this anachronistically under something else that uh, bears the shoulders a little, I could totally do that. And I can pull it in some more with the drawstring if I want to. So it doesn't have to be revealing, but it can be. <laughs> that is the advantage of a very low neckline in your underwear. And it's also very good linen, so it feels very comfortable on the skin. Just for demonstration why I needed new short stays desperately. This is just not working anymore. Remember these were from a video I made like a decade ago. Also my sewing has much improved since then. And these are so worn out. It's just sad to look at. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Just last summer I was still wearing this underneath and this just really doesn't work. Delusions don't hold your boobs up, ladies. So the body changes over the years, especially when you have to sit around for an entire year and not move and hardly ever go out. Okay, let's start lacing these up. You can see here that these are still for pulling. I insisted on that so that I can adjust them. I'm afraid I made one big mistake. I measured these cups when I was on my period. Too much information time, by the way. So when you're on your period, most of the time, your chest gets larger. So that means, unfortunately, that when I'm not on my period, this doesn't look so nice anymore. I mean, I'm going to pull this in here. But um, the cup is a lot less full and this drawstring can't quite compensate for that. So maybe I'm going to have to stuff my bra. I'm not quite sure. Um, if the silhouette doesn't look so nice, I'm going to consider that at least. Okay, I think these turned out very pretty, if not all that practical. Um, one thing I did that was a bit stupid is um, I'm very high-waisted. My natural waistline is about here and these are a few centimeters, two or three centimeters too long in the sides here. So these should go way more up than they are. Then um, something I did manage to adjust was um, these used to be just um, cable ties 
because I thought having several next to one another was going to keep this up. Problem is the boobs push this out, this area. So um, this, you can, you can see here, this is where it could be. And when, it, when I do this, it lifts everything up nicely. And when I let it loose, it just sags in. So this is why ladies used to wear a busk back then, but I'm not that experienced a stay maker and I was a bit lazy and I wanted front lacing because it's easier for me to do alone. So yeah, my bad, um, but they still keep everything up. It's comfortable. I can breathe nice also um, I can push it up a little I can adjust these if I was wearing a gown where I was leaving the shoulder bare which is not usual in the Regency but I could if I wanted to I could just push this and this off to the side which would work also this time they are probably attached in the back and just for tying in the front which is definitely a smarter thing to do in comparison to the last short stays I made. So I'm sorry that I didn't film the progress of this, but I was working on these completely by hand for an entire year almost. And this would have been another really big, slightly boring project, like my Blackberry reticule, and I didn't want to subject anyone to another one like that just yet. Maybe later. So, these are my new stays. I really like them. I shouldn't have made them so low because I'm very short waisted. Other than that, they are very tolerable. One little intermission here because I couldn't show you the insides of the stays while I was wearing them. Here you can see what I did. There's cable ties on the outside here, but that wasn't enough to hold everything in place, so I just um, quickly stitched on uh, I think that's half linen half cotton tape and I put a bit of steel in you can see it peeking out here and this keeps everything in I think the next time I'm going to try one with a busk because that's probably going to hold everything up way better than this flimsy wannabe whalebone stuff also these are completely hand stitched and I hand stitched them with some linen so they actually hold up pretty nicely yeah, this doesn't look so okay but it's still lasting so this is all right I can live with this one thing I did that wasn't so smart um, I used the older method of uh, just stitching the individual panels together and um, then I used this stitch I think it's called a herringbone stitch uh, the German word would be Hexenstich if I translate that into English it would be witch stitch which I quite adore actually so I kind of witch stitched these corners and I did the same thing with the upper and the lower parts and that didn't turn out so great in case of the tabs here. Yeah, I had to do some whip stitching here so that the the little corners here wouldn't fray out. So that is not to be recommended. Just use normal bias binding. That's just way better. Okay. Again, you can see my boobs. A little change of perspective. So this is going to change now. This is just a square tucker. The first time around I wore this was at a picnic last summer where we were all socially distanced picnicking in costume. And whoops, when I wore this I hadn't even hemmed the edge. I would just use some scrap fabric, which was this, in order to tuck it into my cleavage area. It works a lot better because this fabric is so frizzy when you hem the edges. So, and now I'm ready to put on the dress because when I made this blue gown I didn't think that I would have to wear a petticoat underneath because it was very, very hot. So I didn't want to encumber myself even further. Also, I didn't have any time, as usual. But um, while walking a lot I figured that 
I would probably need a petticoat because it kept bunching up between my legs while I was walking and the chemise didn't do a lot to keep the skirt out of my legs. So I'm going to need a petticoat, preferably one that isn't too bulky in the back because I tried wearing this dress with the American Duchess petticoat and the waistline is way too high, it's way too voluminous in the back. The back is a little bit lower in my dress and it, I just looked ridiculous and so I need a better petticoat for this. Okay, I still have a hat by the way, just um, it's really difficult to show you anything when the frame is so wide. This is what I look like right now. Just imagine I'm wearing a petticoat because this is coming soon. Now this dress is technically a bib front dress, but it doesn't have the part that goes over the chest. You're going to see that in just a minute. And this is why we need a ladies maid. Seriously. Okay, this is the simple part. One just, whoops, stays are going somewhere else. Okay, they're back. No, I need to adjust my neckline. So this is the front part and this part goes up later as soon as I've closed this. Okay. Okay. Let me show you how this works. So, this has two different drawstrings, one on the bottom and one at the top. The one at the top goes up to almost the shoulder here and the one in the bottom just goes here to the side. This is still um, very close to the basic pattern from the American Duchess round gown, but I've altered it quite a bit because that was way too voluminous for me. Especially around the shoulder area where I'm already quite voluminous. Very much the swimmer back that I have. So I don't need more volume up there because then I look like I'm a guy. <laughs> And with my voice already this deep, we don't need any more confusion for people, I think. Okay, I could adjust this neckline better, but this is where we are. So what I did in the beginning, I had just this drawstring here and this little bit of fabric I didn't have, which had the very unfortunate effect of making sure that this apron just would be pulled down because I put in some hooks and I made some tiny fabric loops here, right on top. You can't even see them, they're in the same color as the fabric. <laughs> so um, even I have pro problems finding them sometimes, but you can see here, I can hook these in. And if I find the others, I can hook those in too. That's a big if though. Yeah, I guess they're gone. Dang. This might be one. Yeah, this is one. Okay, so you can learn from me kids. Never make your gown too complicated for you yourself to wear it. And then there's some hooks here at the side. I can put the last one in. I can reach around my massive bosom. Seriously, for me, this is like a record size, so this is so weird. Another thing I did was little loops here on the side so that I could put these in because I looked at so many close ups of Eleanor's dress and she definitely has these loops here, here and in the back. 
But right now, because I'm already in the dress, I can't fiddle these in anymore, so I'm not going to put them in. This is one thing I need help with, <laughs> definitely. If I'm already in the dress, I can't fiddle those thingies in anymore. And now I'm just tying it in the back. And I'm in my dress. This is a very pregnancy fashion here. But with um, my new stays in here, it all lies way more flat. The old stays, they would bend outwards because the pressure was so high, so there was like a little shelf here where the skirt was sticking out. <laughs> that wasn't too attractive. Okay, this is the dress. I really like the sleeves. I think the line is very nice. Also, it's a dark color. That is good. Um, the fabric is cotton and linen, so it's very nice for the summer, but I still need a petticoat. A good thing about the bib front dress is that you have the sides open, so I could technically wear a pocket, which they actually still did in the Regency. There's this thing, thing going around that they weren't wearing pockets underneath their dresses anymore, but they totally were. I can only recommend the pocket. One second. It's by Barbara Berman and Ariana Fenfonto. No idea how to pronounce this. Um, there are some really nice pockets in here, and it really clears up this entire misconception that Regency women weren't wearing pockets underneath. So I might make myself a tie on pocket. There's even this scene where Eleanor has this handkerchief that she got from Edward and um, she doesn't really pull it from anywhere. She just like reaches into her dress and pulls it out and looks at it on her bed. So she probably has a pocket somewhere in there. So this would be very correct to the movie and it's historically accurate. So awesome. Ta-da! So this is it. It would have been a lot smarter of me to attach this with a needle somewhere, which I didn't right now. So it keeps pulling up. So this is the dress. I think it's a very neat dress. It's very simple, matches my eyes. Dark color, so you don't see all the dust all the time. And also, I really like this line on me. And as you can see, it's I put a lot of fabric in the back, so I don't actually need a little pad here. Also, I don't have a lot of curvature in my spine anyway, so I think the pad is overkill for me anyways. And now all I would need is a hat. I think some of you have already seen this on my Instagram. I did the Eleanor Dashwood hat. I made it a little differently. I found some really high resolution images and uh, I just, basically I chose not to do that much of a hassle. She has this little bow in the back, but she also has a little bow in the front and sometimes there's flowers, but I didn't go for that. And this is it. She yeah, look way more like um, Mrs. Dashwood than <laughs> Dashwood with this hat, but it's so cute. Finally, the mouse wanderer. That's what I have just think of. Yeah, it's really neat. I should add some ties though, I think, because this could be blown off any minute. Yeah, um, another issue is that on oh, my hair today. Um, turn out very Marianne and not very Eleanor, so it should be higher on top of my head than this would have the perfect foundation. But my head didn't want to do that today, so it's like Marianne goes 90s prom-ish. And then I could just take my hanky and my smelling salts and my sewing kit and whatever, put it in my really cute matching Vertical. Seriously, this color goes really well together. <laughs> I really dig it. And then I could go out and have my Regency adventures. I think I'm so cute in this. Seriously. <laughs> oh, I wanted to show you the chemisette. So, um, next thing I'm thinking. Okay, let's do the chemisette instead of the fichu. 
is a very improvised chemisette. I was shamelessly copying Miss Parlick because she did one around the same time and I got really jealous. So I copied hers. I'll have to see if I can still find the social media post. So my idea with this is because I feel like these standing collars, they're very post-1800 and the dress I made was very 1795. So my Regency life explanation for this dress with this chemisette is that I'm a poor person which completely matches my actual biography so I can feel my way into the character more easily and um, this is a dress that I as my Regency self have sold myself or bought or whatever at some point when it was still all the rage and because I'm poor, I can't afford to buy a whole new wardrobe. So the idea is that I'm upcycling this 5 to 10 to 15 year old dress with a stylish new chemisette in a hopeless attempt to appear fashionable with my friends. <laughs> Which is very much something that I do. I actually have some clothes that are really, really old. And I still wear them, if I still fit into them. Luckily for me, I've gained so much weight that I had to rebuy pretty much my entire wardrobe. So I don't look all that out of touch with the times anymore. Okay, yeah, I think I'm getting the hang of this back, <laughs> slowly but steadily. Now what I would need with this is a very funny little mob cap with lots of frills because I look very old maidish. Ta-da! I like it. So now if I had some gloves which I do, and put on my bonnet, I'd be ready to go. <coughs> Whoa! That's me. Thanks. Ta-da! I look like Mickey Mouse. Also, in case you noticed, I have little buttons here. This actually has a button closure around the sleeves. I'm not a fan of these gloves with anything, if I'm being honest. Um, so um, I don't actually need this because this part here is because of the the historical cut of these dresses with the sleeves. It's cut on the bias so I can get my hands in here anyway. But it had those in the original so I had to do them. Alright, I'm ready to be an aging Austin heroine, probably going very and Elliot. All right, I've got my hat and my nice chemise to protect me against the sun and my gloves and my reticule. So I could go out now if I wanted to, but I have nowhere to go right now. Everything's closed. So this is just for you people. <laughs> okay, bye. See you in the next one.